Hello, my name is Siobhan Moss Savage, and I am the board member of OutCP, as well as the education chair. And I have with me Amy Hannum with um, Paint Dragon Studios. I'm so excited to be able to have the opportunity to chat with you and hold spaces with you during this time, Amy. Um, so let's just jump right in, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. All right. All right, so tell me a little bit about your, tell me and our viewers a little bit about yourself. And um, let me know, like, where you're located and what is, you know, what do you do? I went on your website and I saw all these wonderful things, but I think you can tell it best. So come, give us a little um, insight of what's going on with you. And that's right. beautiful art in the back, by the way. Oh, thank you. So this is, this is all my artwork. Um, I've, been, uh, I've been an artist. I've, I've been working on a professional art career probably since, I would say, 1995. Um, wow. But to, to give you a background, I come from, like, uh, when I was a kid, it was all dance, gymnastics, theater, music. Um, and then as I became an adult, it became more theater and music and art. And then also I went to formal education for um, architectural studies, interior oh. design, business, and then I went back to school for more architecture, <laughs> more, um, and sculpture. Um, and then through, over those years, I also became a Reiki master. So basically, wow. it's, a, it's a combination of architecture, art, and energy work. And that's kind of like the basis behind everything I do. That makes you a very unique, <laughs> very unique artist, very unique healer. Like, how do, what made you want to incorporate Reiki into art? Can you give me a little background about that? So, um, I think it can be best explained using um, meditation terminology. Um, it, it just kind of, it, it all flowed into the same river. Like, you know, like everything just kind of started pointing toward the, the same direction. And so all my fragmented interests just kind of filtered down um, into emotions. Um, emotions are very powerful. Um, it's very powerful energy. Um, and emoting is essentially, when you have a feeling, it's a feeling. But when you express that feeling, it becomes an emotion. So mm. emotions are very, very, I mean, you, you would know that better than I <laughs> as a therapist. Um, but I, I just, I really fell in love with that whole idea of the process of, of emoting and feeling and what is that like. So like a lot of my artwork is very driven by these feelings. Mm -hmm. And these are actually the emotions that came out. Um, so like some of my work with spider webs, I like working mm -hmm. with um, natural materials and I really love animals. And so I noticed spiders. I noticed how beautiful the webs are. And then I noticed the behavior of spiders. And so like a spider will leave its web when it doesn't want it anymore and it'll go build a web somewhere else. Maybe it builds it in a bad location. It'll abandon its web and I can take it. So this is an actual real spider web. Wow, so, okay. So like I'm very inspired by nature, but this was the emotion of like thinking about life as like a spider. <laughs> you know, What is it like to build your house and then when your house doesn't collect food, then you just abandon it and you go somewhere else and you build a house maybe where you can catch better food. You know, so and if a spider oh. is really hungry, it'll eat its web and then I won't have anything to work with. But I, I use abandoned webs and this is another spider web piece of the world, which the web gets me thinking about interconnectedness and how uh -huh. we're all connected. And so when I did this one, I do the background first and then collect the web on the on the piece. Um, so this one just oh. for me, it's the world is in very interconnected. Yeah, I can see how how the Reiki work is and the energy work is definitely connected to art because everything with you is intentional. There's a lot of intentionality in your work, so that's that's interesting. And listen, I had no idea 
that um, a spider, like that there was, it's like almost a spider is a nomad. It's like, well, listen, it's not working for me here, so let me move on. <laughs> and we'll just leave the web. Or that a spider would actually eat its web when it's hungry. I'm like, wow. The listen, all kinds of creatures, you never know. You never know. <laughs> One of the funniest instances I had was that I had my eye on this web because I really liked the way it looked, but the spider was always in the web. So I never, you know, I'm hands off if the spider is there. And uh, it left its web and I noticed, I was on my way out the door and I was like, oh, the spider's, the spider's not there. <laughs> Maybe I can get this web. And I, I approached it. The spider literally like jumped out from, a, like another part of the bush and started gobbling up its web right in front of me. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and wow. I, this thing can read my mind. <laughs> it knows that it knows I want its web. <laughs> the spider said you did not have consent to take my web and so what <laughs> I'm going to do is I'm going to take my web from you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So you, so I know that you're in downtown New London because Amy and I both are in the same building. We're in the Duart yep. building. Um, I'm on the fourth floor and you're on the second floor. Second floor. Okay. <laughs> so we're both in our prospective offices. We are socially distancing as well as interviewing. <laughs> so all of this beautiful art, if you were to come to Amy's place of work or studio, you would see it because that's where she's located now. So. Um, I know that that's where you are, but how did you end up in New London? Have you always lived in New London? I grew up in a little town called Midland, Michigan. Okay. Yep. Uh, Midland, Michigan is where I grew up, and I moved here in in 1995. And wow. I, it was, I grew up, born and raised in Michigan, but I, I traveled all over the world, and I, I knew it was just time, it was the right time to go. Um, I kind of had my fill of where I was living. Um, I was living in Saginaw, Michigan at the time, and I really loved Saginaw. Um, but it was just time to move on. And I came out to visit a friend and I saw the water. And, and that was I just love the water. And it, talk about like coincidences and, and kismet and just how things work. The first place I went in Connecticut was the cemetery by Mystic Seaport. And it's, wow. it's right on the water. It's this gorgeous, you know, it's a beautiful cemetery. You know, you drive through this huge arch to get there. And I went to this place. There's a bench and there's this copper beech tree. And I remembered sitting there thinking, this is such a gorgeous area. It's so beautiful here. That is where I had one of my Reiki attunements. So when you... Really? When you become a Reiki master, you go through a series of attunements. Um, and some people do it like really quickly, but for me, I really wanted to acknowledge each attunement. So I waited at least a year before moving on each level and um, to really sit with the power of each attunement. And um, I think it was my Reiki two attunement I had on that bench under that copper beech tree near the sea. Wow. And I had no wow. idea. It was just like, and my Reiki master picked it. She's like, I've got a place I'm going to take you. It's really beautiful. You'll love it. It's a cemetery. Is that okay? And I said, I love cemeteries. And she took <laughs> me to that same bench. And I was like, wow. Oh. How about that? You know? Wow. Talk about six degrees of separation. Um, Amy, for people who are tune in and maybe are not aware of Reiki, can you just kind of break that down in like layman's terms so folks can understand what that is and like how that can be helpful for them? Sure. So Reiki is Japanese for universal life force. Rei is universal and Ki is Chi, which is energy in Chinese. In Japanese, it's Ki. So Reiki, mm -hmm. universal life force. And basically, it's the energy that flows through all things. If you want to think about it like Star Wars and the Force, that is a very appropriate metaphor. Um, oops, okay. Sorry. My, uh, let me get rid of this. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Adobe Acrobat really wanted to update. Um, so, so Reiki, 
Reiki is basically one form of energy work, and energy work is the broad term for hands-on healing. So another form of energy work is craniosacral technique. So um, craniosacral, acupuncture, acupressure, massage. Um, okay. I, I know there's, there's a whole bunch of um, biofeedback. These are all different forms of energy work, even breath. Like when you're working with the breath, like Wim Hof or um, uh, John Amaral, there's a ton of people who do it. Um, they, uh, that's all energy work. It's all energy cultivation. When you do yoga, that's a form of energy cultivation. So what Reiki is, Reiki is different from other forms of energy work in the attunements. And the attunement is essentially um, how, how, how it was presented to me is my master is going to transfer her knowledge onto me. And okay. she, has, she has been um, attuned to these certain symbols that are used in Reiki. Um, mm -hmm. like, um, and that's what makes it different from other things is like craniosacral, when you do that technique, it's getting in touch with the synovial fluid of the spine. Um, and so usually there's a hand on the, on the back of the head at the top of the spine, and there's another hand at the, at the bottom of the spine. And you're actually mm -hmm. feeling the energy of the synovial fluid, and you're reminding the body of what it's like to be in its perfect state. So that's cranial oh. sacral. Um, okay. But Reiki, Reiki is the attunement part. That's what really makes Reiki different from other forms of energy work. But for me, okay. I, have, um, I have innate gifts that just became more and more powerful as I started gotcha. practicing Reiki. So some Reiki masters will work on you, and they 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 don't really feel anything or they don't see anything they don't get any messages and that's perfectly fine the energy work it's still working um but for me i get all sorts of information um and i'm not exactly sure how that happens i think a physicist could explain it better but for some reason i'm able to pick up information from people wow. give them information that helps them in their healing now, you know, with that brings me to my next question, and thank you for explaining that. Um, I'm quite sure that people are really trying to figure stuff out in this very uncertain time that we've, this is a kind of space that we've never existed in, right? Like, you know, initially, I probably when I, when we first started social distancing, I said, oh, the last three weeks, maybe a month, now we're into going into month three. So with the kind of work that you do as well as art and kind of meshing that all together um tell me some of the things that you've had to adjust to personally and professionally in COVID-19 what are some of the ways you've had to kind of like navigate um both personally and professionally a lot of my life is still the same <laughs> as a i mean as an artist um my interior design practice has really taken a back seat um, a lot of people, you know, have difficulty getting the permits that they need for building projects. So that's really taken a backseat. I do still um, do some distance work uh, because being in New London, honestly, there there's not a lot of demand for any of the jobs that I do. Um, okay. So I tend to have to do a lot of work out of state. Um, so, so a lot of the interior design um, I do online or I'll visit the location. So that hasn't changed too much. I just don't visit the locations. Um, gotcha. with, the, with the artwork, I have a very serious art project that I've been working on for a couple of years, and I'll share that with you, I think, later on the, on the what are you working on now part. Um, but the energy work, the energy work has, um, because I'm no longer seeing clients in person, mm -hmm. one of the attunements that I was talking about is, um, is a symbol and these symbols are sacred um, and they're private. So out of respect for other Reiki masters and for the Reiki profession, I am going to respect that and keep that secret. Um, okay. People have different comfort levels with talking about the symbols, but I'll tell you that there's a symbol that's specifically for distance. Um, oh, okay. and, it's, and it's for distance Reiki. Um, so I've been doing, I've been seeing all of my patients uh distantly and 
no phone, no computer necessary, just the ability to devote and set aside the hour for yourself in a quiet place um, where you can be comfortable. And then I go into a meditative state and I focus solely on my patient for that. Wow. Hour. And their body speaks to me and shows me things. And I, I just open to it. And, um, but it's amazing when I talk to my patients after the experience, I'll say, like recently I, I saw a patient and I said, you know, I couldn't find you. I was like, look, looking for you. You know, I was like searching for their energy. And I said, I couldn't find you. And they told me, um, they said, well, my phone rang and I had to answer the phone right when we were about to start. So I didn't get settled until like five minutes after. And I said, oh, well, that's why I found you at 10.05 instead of 10 o'clock. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're able to really do this work because definitely right now it's needed. I, you know, I know for me personally, um, you know, you and I, um, we're on a, a OTT call, um, Zoom, a Zoom luncheon about maybe a couple of several weeks ago. And we were just kind of chatting about how we were navigating things. And I know that I've had, had an increase in folks wanting to see me more frequently just because their anxiety level has risen. So I'm quite sure that you also get that. And I'm glad that you're still able to provide that service to your patients. That's awesome, especially with this. So basically what I'm hearing is that the kind of Ricky that you're able to do is like COVID actually helped it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier. It makes it yeah. a lot easier because I was, you know, I was, I, I do in-home visits for, for my patients who have been with me for a while and I know them, I'll do like in-home visits. Um, but the distant thing has been great because I don't have to travel. My patients don't have to travel. We, you know, we can just do it where we are. So it makes it really convenient. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now, um, I know that, well, I, I'll let you tell it. So what has been your past involvement um, for the OCT, and what are you kind of hoping to maybe um, involve us in and partnering with you um, in the future? Oh, wow. Um, so my involvement with OCT was I was one of the founding board members. Wow. Yep, Constance. <laughs> Constance Christopher yeah. called me, um, and we, I'm trying to remember, we know each other from Connecticut College, because I worked there as a, um, in information services for a long time, um, and she called me up and told me, you know, she's like, I really just want to be there, and I want to create, a, a, you know, there was like, Hartford had their LGBTQIA mm -hmm. section, and like, New Haven had their section, but there was we were missing that in New London. And she said, I really want to get something going in New London. I thought, this is fantastic. Yes, let's do this. And it, it was the most amazing experience being on a board. I just, I loved everybody. We got along. Like it was, I never hear this story about boards, you know, <laughs> but it was like the out CT board was just a pure joy. I absolutely loved working with them. So, you know, it's so great to hear that because, um, you know, I'm a new board member. I board, um, onboarded in January. And the reason why I even became an OCT board member is because when my spouse got a job, it's interesting that you say, at Connecticut College about three years ago. Yes. And so that's how, <laughs> that's how we actually migrated up here. She, she um, left. She's been here almost three years and I've been here about almost two years now. But, um, I, when I first came to visit and my first actual, when I came up in July of 2018, I think I went to the pride. I said, well, it, I think like a week, like I came in in July and I think in August they had pride. And I said, well, New London has a pride. Okay. It's a small little town. So we went and checked it out and I was just greeted with such warmth and, and support. And it was just so fantastic and wonderful. And wonderful for me and left such a really soft spot in my heart and so the next year I actually um volunteered um through um an organization that I um was formerly a part of called um uh, Naturalista so if you see my shirt yeah. 
Connecticut Natural Leases. And so we volunteered there um, in the Youth Pride to show um, some of the um, POC LGBTQ folks how to kind of like do their natural hair and things like that. So we were there in the Youth Center. And so from that, I ended up meet, um, seeing um, Cecil and Edwin. And I said, you know, I'm interested in being connected and the rest is history. And so it's interesting that my connection was with pride. And that is one of the first reasons why um, you even probably got on the board was because y'all were creating pride and then all of the other wonderful things came after it. So Amy, what do you think, being a, an original board member, how, what does it do to you to see how OutCT has grown? And what are your thoughts about it? Um. I guess I would like to be more involved. Um, okay. it, you know, it's, it's actually been a, a while since I've been really involved. I mean, when you're a board member, you're doing so much and you're, you're really in the heat of it, planning everything. Um, I think once I stepped off of the board, there were just so many other things competing for my attention. I really like, I still love everybody there. Um, but we just haven't seen each other as much. Yeah, and so yeah. it was really, and that was one of the reasons when Kia set up the um, the happy hour, I said I got to do this because I just missed everybody and I and I wanted to see them again. This is, so I, I I have to say I'm I'm lacking like the immediate knowing everything that's going on because I I have been I haven't been involved as much as I was. Yeah, but like I think um, 2018. That might have been the pride where Edwin borrowed my carnival sign. Was there a big carnival sign up there at, at Pride on the beach? It might have been because I actually have a picture of me standing in front of a rainbow backdrop posing. Okay. Um, and I have to find the picture or whatever. And that was I was like, let me check out this new London Pride. And I'm smiling. And I was like, okay. So okay. it was, it had all kinds of vendors. And so, I mean... That really that that connection made me want to come back and be a part of it, and so um, and Constance definitely is a connector because um, when I went to an event at um, they had a happy hour at Barry's Ice Cream, she was there and we chatted and then she reached out to me and I was like, oh Chevelle, you need to be connected to this person. Let me introduce you to that person. And so that's kind of what her gifting is. She's a connector, so I could definitely see her taking on, um, you know this and actually seeing it and, and letting it fly off or whatever. I'm always interested to see like people who have been there from the beginning, like what do they think now that, you know, they've kind of stepped back or whatever. So it's I good to hear that, that you. That. I love that. Yeah. I love just that it's still going, you know, I mean, like yeah. I, every once in a while I hear about all the great things that are happening and it's just, it's so hard for organizations these days, especially now, but you know, it's, it's yeah. just hard to get a group of people together and, and, and keep something going. So I just, I just love that they're, you know, chugging along and doing everything. And, and I'm happy to see everybody when I can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And one thing that you said, the, the synergy with um, all of our board members is awesome. Like everybody there is so kind and welcoming and affirming. And so it definitely creates, um, uh, it's a way for you to be able to do the work and, and being engaged in doing the work and being happy to do the work. So let me ask you this. What exciting news do you have for our viewers uh, that actually your studio, and I'm going to go ahead and put this up there so y'all can see. There we go. And she's going to talk about it a little bit more. <laughs> well, actually, I'll show you something that I'm working on and I can talk about um talk about it a little bit. Oh, so this kind of goes back in with the whole, all the rivers merging. Um, that, that, uh, yeah, that, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the word now. Um, metaphor, the metaphor of all the rivers coming together. Um, basically with all of my background, um, I've realized that one of the things that really makes me happy is creating unique, meaningful experiences for other people. Um, so, I've done this through performance art and I've done this through art installation that I, I'll create oh. these huge events that are free and open to the public. Um, wow. And I've gotten, I've received some grants. I've been awarded some grants to help these projects come to realization. And the most recent one 
blends marine science, mindful awareness, and po positivity, and wood burning. Wow. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So it seems like very, very separate things, right? Like, what do these things have to do with each other? Well, so marine science, I get very into the environment. Um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the environment and I, I could go overboard, but I, I'm just a normal human being <laughs> and I do my best to, to use good products and, um, and be nice to the environment and um, mm -hmm. put all the animals in it um, yeah. and, and honor them. And so what I've really felt as an artist is that I, I'm really taking, um, I'm really taking a back seat to creating artwork for, for galleries. Um, I found that I was making a lot of stuff, but if it didn't get into a show, or even if it did get into the show, then I'm like mailing it places. And it just became very, very consumer oriented and very, I wanted to do, I wanted to do something using totally natural materials. And yeah. I wanted it to, I didn't want to make something new to bring into the world. I wanted to kind of use things that are already there. Um, so I found driftwood. We have a, wow. We have a fun, we have a ton of driftwood in this area, you know, right on the shoreline. And I thought, well, this driftwood came from somewhere, right? And the water brought it here. So it started me thinking about the water and the, you know, the shoreline, Long Island Sound, the, the mm -hmm. Atlantic Ocean, you know, so you start small, Thames River, but then you think bigger, like this body of water goes somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the driftwood is the method and the material or the water is, is the method, but basically you can use the water to transport driftwood. And I thought, well, I'm gonna teach people about marine science and how the water connects us. And then I'm going to talk about positivity and how to spread positivity and how to cultivate mm. that in your life. And then, we're, we're, then it moves into this pyrography section where we use the positivity to determine what we're going to put on that driftwood. It's a whole workshop um, that I'm teaching right now and I received a grant to get it going, um, but it's called, this is the, are we reaching you? And um, it's, it's just been amazing to see the workshop participants and how happy they are because it's like, this is the merging of all the things that make me happy about meaningful experiences. And, and um, it's a great crafting project because people are really looking for um, something to take their attention away from all the troubles that are going on right now. And wood burning, mm -hmm. wood burning is so methodical. It's so slow and, and it's meditative. Um, there's a process to it. And it's just lovely when I get to that point in the work workshop where we start getting into the wood burning, everybody gets really quiet and they just like, you can tell they're really getting into it and it smells good because when you're burning the wood, it's kind of like having a tiny, tiny little campfire. There's just, just uh -huh. the slightest of, of smells. You can do it indoors. It's totally safe. Okay. Um, and my grant has, um, has allowed me to purchase 10 different woodworking tools. So if you're in okay. New York, Connecticut, I can let you borrow a woodworking tool and I can get you driftwood. If wow, you know, okay. People who wanna take the, so if people need some positivity or they wanna like start a new craft project, I would be happy for them to take my workshop. All the information is online on my website. Oh. Um, and I can show you, if I can spin the camera around, I can show you what I'm working on. All right. Yeah, we'll do, absolutely. We'll do this slow oh. zoom of my, oh, so, so this is my computer office. <laughs> um, and then, and then we're moving into my Reiki office. So, oh, okay. I have a zero gravity chair. Thing. Um, we get all the things. So that's, <laughs> so this, this is where I sit when I'm focusing on my patients. Um, okay. And then, doo, 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 and then there's the art studio. 
Wow. Um, and then this is where I used to see interior design clients when they came to my office. <laughs> and then, yeah. I mean, you have like three different places all into one area. <laughs> this, this is why I'm an interior designer. I know how to make it all work. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You need to come up to the heel space and tell me, am I um, utilizing my space appropriately? <laughs> so, um, so this is, um, oh, that's, so oh. this is big. Like the, a lot of the pieces of driftwood we're working with are much smaller, but this is something I had under my front porch for years and I just needed to use it. So what I did was actually, I might have to turn the camera a little bit this way because it's too big. Okay. Um, so what I did was I really love sacred geometry. Uh-huh. And so I started off with that part. Um and uh and then I added some shading. I'm trying to remember Spire Spiros Haram Haramus, I think is the guy's name who came up with this design. And then I just embellished it a little bit. But then I wanted to do something with um the phases of the moon. So you will never see the phases of the moon done like this. But it's wow. basically, you know, you have the quarter to the full moon on this side. Huh? And then you have the waning quarter. Well, it's, you'll never see it represented like this. But then we have the new moon on this side. But um, so this, I'm, I'm going to cast this out into the ocean when I'm done with it. Um, and of course it has... The hashtag, all of the pieces. Wow. Are we reaching? Okay. Out? On the other side, what I wanted to do was one of the things that I encourage um, my workshop participants to do is that if they if they speak other languages, you know, think about where this driftwood might go, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and think about the different countries that it might end up on, and think about the languages that they speak there. So what I've done is. I've got the word connections written. Uh, I just started this in a bunch of different languages. So French, Portuguese. Um, I think this is Finnish. <laughs> Tengingar. I don't know how to say it. Uh, but I have Conexal. I have Conexiones. I have uh, Conexion. So connections. So basically, I'm just going to fill this side with all these different connections in different languages. <laughs> you know, Amy, I am just so impressed. Um, the, you, first of all, let me ask you a question. Is there, what is the level of um, like artistry that you need to have to, to be able to be a part of this? Can you be a novice? Because that seems some really oh, hefty yeah. work there. Yeah, okay, check out, okay. So check out Instagram. If you go to Instagram, um, I have two Instagram accounts. One is at Paint Dragon Design, and then the uh -huh. other one is at, at Are We Reaching You? A R E W E R E A C H I N G Y O U, like all spelled out. Um, and if you go to that Instagram page, you'll see what my workshop participants have done. There's so okay great it's like it's just but i mean you can be these people have never touched a wood burning tool before some of them like okay. a lot of them. yeah yeah okay. so you it just um the workshop you don't have any experience. so you yeah. don't need to have any experience now tell me is there a cost to participate in the um workshop it's uh 25 dollars okay yep but that's still Good. That's still pretty good. Wow. You know what? I'm I'll be honest with you. Just in in the times that we're in right now, this is such a wonderful way to stay connected with folks. And then I love the fact that you're like, I don't know where this drift was going to end up. And also thinking about being a global, um, you know, a global situation where you have different um, words, different ways to say connection in different languages. I think that is awesome. So. And also, and it also brings me to um, my final point, and then I'm going to let you go and be great. <laughs> um, but 
I know I asked a couple of maybe a couple of weeks ago um, in an Instagram um, post I made, I asked people about resilience rituals and what they were using to kind of keep themselves sane and all of that. And I know that you talked about a lot of great things that you incorporate in your uh, professional life, but like, what are some things that you're noticing that you're doing to kind of keep your resilience up? What rituals have maybe have you incorporated to kind of keep your, your spirits up and, and, and not be dealing with all the things that we're dealing with, with all these, it's a lot, Chad, it's a lot. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I really need to say that I feel very lucky because, because life as an artist for me is actually very, very solitary. So I'm often here either creating artwork by myself or, you know, I'm online essentially looking for somebody who's going to pay an artist to do what I do. So that's pretty gotcha. solitary. So my life hasn't changed a whole lot. And that's, I'm very fortunate, you know, like I don't have to deal with going back to work and being surrounded by a lot of people. But one of the things that um, I really found helpful is I'm actually uh, leading meditations, 30 minute meditations online on Zoom. And so okay. um, if anybody's interested, they can go to my website and they can use any one of my contact forms and say, hey, I want to do uh, a meditation. Um, they're by donation, um, and they're on Zoom. Um, but for 30 minutes, it's a really great way for people to get an introduction to meditating. Meditating, gotcha. is like, it's the best thing in the world. Because, like, it's just by focusing on your breath for even, like, 10 seconds and really, like, feeling your feet on the ground. And it... Just even that is great, but like 30 minutes of meditation, I meditate for an hour. Um, but if you can meditate for even five minutes, it's it's going to change your life. So meditation is great. Um, also, just you know, everybody's having a rough time. So yeah, you know, if somebody's angry or upset or hostile, they're really having a rough time. Give them space. Yeah, um, you know, or you know, just. Do something different. Come learn how to, you know, take a workshop and 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 learn how to uh, empower yourself through a wood burning workshop. You know, it's the driftwood workshop is like it's the transformation that I've seen just in the workshop as people. It's it's just incredible. So yeah, you gotta you gotta look for your happiness in little ways and and find your space in little ways. But just remembering to like ground yourself and take a few deep breaths and really just block out everything around you even for a few seconds is a deal changer it's a game changer yeah i'm gonna tell you so i really appreciate you sharing that especially around the meditation of just like five minutes i think a lot of times people become um intimidated and feel that they need to meditate you know for an hour in order for it to be effective but just attuning yourself to your breath you would be surprised at how it is so easy so on that note listen amy you've given us some wonderful things to think about um this is Amy Hannum, honey, and uh, as you, I don't know if y'all saw all of the things, but you'll be able to see it. She has an interior design studio. She um, has a, a, a Reiki part of her <laughs> portion of her of her studio, as well as her arts, everything, all the things in there, and they hodgepodge together, and they work. They work, and so I think this is a perfect and second installment to Who's in the Neighborhood with OutCT. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, Amy. Right, I will you. let you go back and be great. Will you tell our viewers one more time where you're located at and your contact information so they can reach out to you? Oh, sure, yeah. So I am in New London, Connecticut, 300 State Street, Suite 222. Um, and you can find me at amyhannum.net, H-A-N-N-U-M. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Amy. I will talk to you later, and you have a good rest of your day. Thanks so much, Chevelle.